Uh, I'm Allie. I'm the CTEP serving at the Roseville Library working with adults. And our project was digital storytelling with LGBT youth. Okay. Um, so basically we wanted to work with them consistently. So every week or every other week to teach digital storytelling skills so that they could express themselves and really build up those skills so that they could do it in the fullest and best way possible. Um, and we especially wanted the teens to be able to share their stories creatively and share them at the end with an optional exhibition where they would be able to show it to the other members in the group and possibly even some teachers or outside organizations. So as you might have guessed, our plans for this project were quickly dashed. Um, we found ourselves with several pretty major roadblocks. Um, the first of which even before coronavirus is that we did reach out to many community partners such as high schools and other local organizations to try and connect with pre-existing groups or even start certain kinds of groups uh, like uh, GSA uh, or QSA or things like that. But unfortunately, none of the many organizations we reached out to responded to us. Um, and then COVID-19 happened. Uh, and therefore, uh, all of our plans for an in-person project uh, were thrown out the window. So we started working on a concept for a virtual summer camp as a replacement. Uh, unfortunately, all of our service sites had drastic changes in how we did our AmeriCorps service because of COVID-19. And then the Black Lives Matter protests um, following the murder of George Floyd uh, caused a whole lot of changes uh, and extra um, service that we needed to do at our sites. Uh, and because of these factors, the project was kind of on the back burner for many of us. Uh, and it's definitely seemed like that a project on the scale or in the style that we originally thinking seemed unrealistic. So we had to pivot. Um, so we decided to each make some educational videos about how to use uh, free or accessible apps and uh, web resources to hopefully still translate some of that learning to teens. Um, so the video I made was about the free Adobe app, Adobe Lightroom, that will help uh, anybody or youth uh, who wants to take photos, sort of take their photography skills to the next level and hopefully learn some more in-depth skills about photography. Hi, I'm Devin. I'm the CTEP at the Shoreview Library. Um, and so when this plan uh, was for in-person or virtual meetings, I was going to be teaching some more traditional methods of storytelling as well as some digital techniques. Um, so for the video I created, I focused on a combination of both of those. And this included making a mini art book or zine or collage, which uh, youth could use to showcase some of the digital art and photography techniques that others are teaching. And of course, there are digital methods of sharing your story, which are probably more accessible in the time of COVID, but it can also be super rewarding to be able to hold a piece of your art and story or to give it to someone so they can keep it. And so with this video, I showcased a relatively cheap and easy method of doing that. So I did a Tinkercad video, which if you're unfamiliar, Tinkercad is a free online software um, where you can create designs for 3D printing. Um, in my video, I taught people how to make a keychain, which is one of the most basic um, designs that you can do. And it also teaches all of the essential tools and tasks that you need to be able to use. And the hope is that you can make the keychain and then be able to use those skills to do more extra, um, extravagant, I guess, and creative um, projects. I made a video about how to use, I, I'm Rachel, I'm the CTEP at Brian Coyle Center. I made a video about how to make podcasts with Anchor FM. Podcasting is uh, more, it's been emerging uh, in the past few years as a more popular form of entertainment. Fun fact, when quarantine started, Amazon actually ran out of their stock of podcast microphones. 
So I wanted to make sure that the kids knew that they also could make podcasts and it didn't really involve much beyond a simple headphone mic and what they had online. So I made a video about how to distribute their podcast so they could reach a wider audience. And we have uploaded all these videos and they will soon to be, it will soon be released on YouTube. And thank you if you have any questions for us. All right, thanks group. Uh, yeah, if people wanna throw their comments or questions into the chat and we'll, we'll go through. This is also a, a project that was pretty affected, as you mentioned, uh, through like, the changes with uh, in-person service and next. Um, uh, for folks in this project doing uh, CTEP again next year, kind of what are your ideas on kind of how you could uh, use these resources? Yeah, so that. I'm looking forward to um, teaching adults next year instead of youth, but I like the idea that these are videos that will be free and available online. So that if any of our students are looking for ways to tell their own story online, then we have these resources to tell them. I can just say, hey, look at this video. It will tell you what you need to know. Um, to respond to Lisa's question, which if you haven't seen it in the chat, um, it says, Lisa asks, seems like a lot of these projects made it so hard to get participants. But on the flip side, it seems like it gave CTEP members a chance to explore some technology themselves. Seems like we don't always have the time to do that when we're focusing on direct service. Would you recommend CTEP doing tutorial videos on more advanced platforms for incoming CTEP members? Um, so I think, all these I think all these videos and uh, even for my service site, I ended up making a lot of tutorial videos on how to use free and open source platforms and uh, technology and apps and things like that. And I think that uh, it was a way for me to help address um, and provide content for my service site over coronavirus and lockdown. But additionally, with these videos we made, I think they, the cool thing about them is they can be used in the future. And if you're like at your service site or even if other CTEP members are like, oh man, I wanna teach a participant how to use Tinkercad or a participant's asking me about photography, then CTEP members can access these videos and gain a quick understanding of how to use this stuff but also you could even share them with participants. And I'm planning on using a lot of the videos I made in the future uh, to use as resources for participants and uh, community members at my service site. So I think that recording stuff in that fashion is a good way to have long-term content while even right now still providing a direct need for your service site, if that makes sense. Great, Thank thanks Emery. Uh, Ali, I think, did you want to jump in to talk about your ideas on, I know that like the Ramsey County Library System uses tutorial videos a lot. Yeah, um, so for us, we actually, so we have a makerspace um, and we have a lot of resources like handouts, but we don't have any videos. Um, so I was thinking maybe in the fall, I would sort of continue to make tutorials for all of the more complicated technologies so that people can both use those tutorials and also um, see what everything is about even before coming to the makerspace. Great. And then I see Lisa made a comment. I think you, you also learn the technology yourself even better through the process, which is kind of an added bonus. Mm -hmm. Great, very cool. 